So I'd like to talk about measuring a particular RF measurement. Um, let's talk about sweeping filters. So there's several ways to do this and several instruments in order to do this. So if you're fortunate to have a spectrum analyzer with a tracking generator, uh, you can sweep a filter. And that's what I do on the HP 8921. That's exactly what it has built into it, is a, a tracking generator with uh, input to a spectrum analyzer. So I'll show sweeping a filter on that. The other thing you can use is a VNA, uh, the S21 measurement, which is um, the signal from channel 0 to channel 1 on the nano VNA. So you can do a filter measurement on the nano VNA. So I will show that. And then there's a way to use a spectrum analyzer without a tracking generator. And I wanted to show that. And this is all in keeping with the less than $50 test equipment uh, craze that's going on right now. Uh, I, I find it really, really exciting that you can get a vector network analyzer, a spectrum analyzer, uh, stepped attenuator filters, oscillators, a whole bunch of stuff for less than 50 bucks each. And it's just really, really cool for people to be able to build their own RF lab with next to no money at all. I mean, it's still expensive for some people, but um, it's, it's super, super cheap compared to what it was in the old days. Um, you know, multi-thousands of dollars back in the old days. And not only are things getting cheaper, things are actually getting better. So I'm going to be talking about a analog spectrum analyzer on my channel. And in all fairness, I'd rather use the Tiny SA uh, because it has a synthesized generator and doesn't drift. So it's actually a much more pleasant instrument to use. So, you know, anyway, so let's talk about uh, making filter measurements. The first one I'll do is with the um, HP 8921. So this is a spectrum analyzer plus a tracking generator. This particular filter is a saw filter, and it is uh, centered at around 85 megahertz. So I've set it up and measured it, and this is what it looks like. And it looks like a normal bandpass filter. Now the next measurement I wanted to do is with the nano VNA, and I've shown this before. But uh, let me sweep the same filter with the nano VNA, and this is what it looks like. And you can see that using the spectrum analyzer plus tracking generator or using the S21 of the VNA, you're getting about the same results. So let's talk about using a spectrum analyzer if you don't have a tracking generator. And I have a video on this, I'll try to link it in, uh, using a noise generator plus a spectrum analyzer to do a filter measurement. So I'm going to be using the Tiny SA sub $50, and I'm going to be using a very inexpensive noise source, I think maybe $8 or something. Uh, and so I'm going to hook that up, and let me show you how that's hooked up. You have the noise source uh, powered by 12 volts, and then you go into the filter, and then you go into the spectrum analyzer. That's all there is to it. Now, the noise source creates an equal amount of energy at all wavelengths. So if there was no filter, you'd just get a straight line. And then if you put a filter in it, you'll attenuate everything except for the, where the filter is acting as a bandpass. So you should be able to get the same picture. So I'm going to do that twice. I'm going to do it once on the HP 8921 acting as just a spectrum analyzer. So I'm going to put the noise generator and the filter into the HP instrument in spectrum analyzer mode, and we'll get this, this, this picture. Now we seem to not have as much dynamic range as the other methods, uh, but it, it's still giving us the information that we want. It's telling us um, what the center frequency is, what the 3 dB points are in the filter and things like that. So it's still, it's still a valuable measurement. So now let's do it with the Tiny SA, and uh, we will hook that up. And if you have everything uh, connected in auto mode, uh, you'll get this picture. Now, I was, I was a bit confused about this picture. Um, first of all, I was excited that it had more dynamic range than the HP one. But then on closer inspection, I noticed that the right-hand side of the filter was much mm, stranger than the left-hand side. Uh, the right-hand seemed to look what appeared to be phase noise on the right-hand side, and the left-hand side to be, seemed to be a little too good to be true. <laughs> 
it had a dynamic range down to minus 100 dBm. So I reached out to uh, Eric uh, uh, Kazhoek, I ho hope I'm pronouncing his name correctly, and he is, gave me some information on what the tiny essay is doing and what its limitations are. And uh, there are a couple limitations. One of those we already saw in measuring AM signals, that if you overdrive the uh, tiny SA, you will start to get harmonics. And I then demonstrated that with, a, a, with the HP spectrum analyzer. If you overdrive it, it will also give you harmonics. It's just a function of mixers. So he suggested that I try lower attenuation levels uh, take it out of manual mode, uh, auto mode, put it in the manual mode, try different attenuations. He also suggested some other settings. Uh, there are some gain settings in the expert configuration menu. I don't want to touch those yet. I will eventually, but I don't want to touch those yet because I think they'll probably get a lot of people into trouble. And the only people who are going to be using the spectrum analyzer and touching really, really weird settings are going to be pretty sophisticated users already. So I kind of want to address the users that just want to use the spectrum analyzer easily and not have to think too much about it. They're not experts. So the first thing I did was to take the attenuator and put it into manual mode and lower the uh, attenuator setting. I think it was ramping up to 0 d dB of attenuation. And I set it at 20 dB of attenuation, and everything seemed to work really good and seemed to match exactly what the HP instrument did in this particular configuration. So I'm really happy with just setting the attenuator low and getting a good-looking image. So once again, uh, I love the Teeny SA. Uh, I think that sometimes when you look at a particular measurement, try adding attenuation and seeing if things change. And if things do change, then try to convince yourself whether they're changing for the better um, and whether maybe that's what you should be using and ignoring the extra dynamic range that you're trying to get to by changing uh, the attenuator um, to not have much attenuation. It's better to have a lot of attenuation and trust the measurement.